which my Allah and your Allah said don't do, we don't do. That is taqwa. Allah doesn't care what your faces look like. Allah doesn't care about your nationalities. Allah doesn't care if you've got a red passport in your back pocket. Brother, I can't make amal on deen. I can't practice deen because I'm not living in Makkah. But take this out of your brain. So for you to wake up and read five minutes Quran is better than that person that doesn't read nothing at all. Respected brothers and elders, it gives me pleasure to be able to come and talk to the brothers very shortly and very briefly. And what we want to talk about very briefly in this short amount of time is one of the du'as of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he made many du'as, many profound du'as, many du'as which were very short and yet very wide in meaning. One of those particular du'as from amongst the many du'as of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one du'a was, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda wa tuqa wal afafa wal ghina This particular dua of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is very comprehensive very jami' and it has a lot of meaning and it has a lot of different things which we can cover Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda Oh Allah I beseech you I beg you I implore you that you give me guidance you give hidayah and guidance and this is something which we as Muslims recite in our daily salah ihdina sirat al-mustaqim ihdina sirat al-mustaqim again and again again and again so much so that if a person does not when they are praying if they are praying individually and they do not even say then the Fatiha then their salah will not be valid so for this very reason it is this why this and this dua is in this Fatiha but Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda asking Allah for guidance subhanallah as if Rasul sallallahu as if he needed guidance he was al-hadi al-mahdi he was already guided but he even used to ask Allah for more as well Second thing, Allahumma inni asalak al huda, wa tuqa. Wa tuqa we would translate as piety. Piety, God fearingness. And we will touch on this in just a minute, insha'Allah. Wal afaf. Afaf, chastity, purity. From what? From doing anything which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From doing any such thing which will cause the displeasure of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. From getting yourself into a situation which Allah tabarak wa ta'ala dislikes. Wal ghina, translated ghina, it means wealth. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not commanded to seek money. However, to ask for this much that I do not want to extend my hand in front of other people. Let me have what is referred to as being... Uh, self-sufficient. Let me have enough where I don't need to be put my hand in front of others. Ghina and wealth. And also if I mention something as well, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned having a lot of houses, having a lot of land, having a lot of wealth. I'm using houses as a modern day translation. Kathratul ard. Kathratul, kathratul ard. Having lots of land, having lots of la earth. Having this in your possession doesn't make you a wealthy individual. Verily, wealth really comes when your heart is rich and you feel like you are a rich man. Otherwise, we can give multitudes of examples of people who have inherited billions, millions, and in terms of a worldly point of view, they are so well advanced because that is what we have made the objective of our lives today. And we will class that as success. However, we see that people are toppling themselves, even throwing themselves into the, uh, to the qabr and even finishing their lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. We want to talk about this second part very briefly in the limited time we have because the month of Ramadan just passed by and we are now seeing the month just after that. Why taqwa? Why should we talk about this now? Allah wa ta'ala told us, reminded us, instructed us. The reason why fasting is made incumbent upon you, why do you have to fast? Why do you have to keep roza? Why do you have to make song? Is for one reason and one reason only. You develop the quality of taqwa. You become a muttaqi. You become muttaqoon. You fear Allah wa ta'ala. I'm using the word fear. But taqwa has a meaning wider than just the word fear. If I mention by way of Muhaddithun, Allama ibn Allan al Shafi'i, look in his Dalil al Falihin, you'll find a very nice bahath there. Just very quick summarize two words or two sentences will cover the whole meaning of taqwa. Number one, Imtithalul Awamir. Imtithalul Awamir. What does that mean? Fulfilling the commands of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Imtithal, awamir, the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And wa ijdina nawahi. Those things which my Allah and your Allah said don't do, we don't do. 
That is taqwa. These two collective things are referred to as taqwa. Even in the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba, it mentions something along these lines as well. That taqwa is what? Doing good deeds and abstaining from haram. This in essence is what taqwa is. It comes from the root word wiqaya. Wiqaya to shield yourself, to protect yourself. Protect yourself from what? Protect yourself from whom? To protect yourself from the ghadab and the, ang- ghadab and the anger of Allah wa ta'ala. Because when one person does that thing which Allah dislikes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes this. And then the wrath of Allah can descend on such an individual. But when a person does which Allah loves, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives more tawfiq to do even more good deeds. This is why Faqih Abu Layth as samarqandi rahmatullahi alayhi mentioned a very very fine point. He mentioned that individual, that man, that woman, that youngster, that Muslim, that found the month of Ramadan, وَلَمْ يَزْدَدْ لَهُمْ خَيْرًا But they, they never increased in any good a'mal. They never increased after Ramadan with anything decent. Their ibadah stayed stagnant. Ramadan, there was a pulse of up and then it went swiftly back down. Those people whose condition is this, I hate to tell you for the set record straight, Allah wa ta'ala, my dear brother and sister, did not even accept your Ramadan. This is not the words of me. Where I can make such a bold claim, rather Faqih Abu Layth as Samarqandi, a great Faqih of the past. Look, I mean, Subhanallah. Just think back and reminisce. What was our Ramadan like? Subhanallah. I know, Masha'Allah, Ramadan is a time when we are filling up our plates with foods and everyone's feet, feet freezes are full of samosas and kebabs. We know this. But in terms of a'mal, in terms of actions, by compared before until now, what was the difference? What is the difference? Is there a drop? Is there an increase? What is the situation and the condition of our life? If unfortunately we have not increased in any good a'mal, then really, very really know that Ramadan came and it just went. We didn't achieve the maximum benefit of what Ramadan had to offer. Undoubtedly, Undoubtedly, the fard will go from our heads. We can say, okay, the fard has been done. But what is the real fruit from Ramadan which we left off with? And that was taqwa. That was the quality of taqwa, which I just explained. A- acting upon the commands of Allah, abstaining from the things which are haram. This is why Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made this dua, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda wa tuqa oh Allah, give us taqwa. Give us this, period, this, this quality of taqwa. Now I know you'll find people translated God-fearing, 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 but it, is, it entails more than that. Because it also includes an element of making amal and practice on the things which Allah likes. Imagine this. Imagine this for a moment. You're never going to see someone again. <coughs> and they say to you, give me some lasting parting advice and something of importance. That would have to be such an important thing that if you were to take into consideration everything which was mentioned before, this had to outweigh everything. You're, this is the last time you're going to see this individual. They are asking you, they are requesting you, please give me some nasiha, give me some advice, give me something that I can go and I can think about and I can ponder over and so on and so forth. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was with Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the famous sahabi, one of the fuqaha of sahaba, that went to Yemen, he mentions, لَمَّا بَعَثَهُ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِلَى الْيَمَنِ فَخَرَجَ مَعَهُ يُوصِيهِ Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and those who understand the Arabic can appreciate that a little bit more. But when Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent Mu'adh to Yemen, he went with him and he started walking along with him, Yusihi. He was giving him advice, wasiya. He was giving him last moments of advice. And then he had to give a final bit. Many, many advices were given. What to do, how, what not to do, and so on and so forth. But one of the last bits of advice which he gave, it had to have held importance. He said to him, Ya Mu'adh, Innaka satalqani ba'da ammi hadha, fala'allaka tamurru bi masjidi wa qabri. Ya O Mu'adh, you will come again. Innaka satalqani ba'da ammi hadha. You will come and meet me after the passing by of this year. You will not pass by me. You will not see me. You will not see Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَلَعَلَّكَ تَمُرُّ بِمَسْجِدِ وَقَبْرِ I hate to break the news to you, O Mu'adh, but I think you're going to pass by my, my masjid and you are going to pass by my qabr and my grave. Just imagine this for a moment. 
This is not just some dos yar, some, some, some dude on the street saying Salaam Alaikum to a next man. Where this is the Prophet وسلم, saying something like this to Mu'adh. What was the condition of Mu'adh? What did Mu'adh go through for a second thing? The, it was this, the, the Prophet وسلم, was that individual who they were ready to sacrifice their whole lives for. Sahaba. Urwa ibn Mas'ud al thaqafi if you look into why he became a Muslim and he accepted Islam, he said, whenever this Prophet of Allah would make wudu, when he, I'm just giving a khulasa of the hadith, when he would make wudu and he would make ablution, droplets would drop, even when he spat, when the Mubarak spit of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they would not drop the floor, Sahaba would, he would even vie with one another to get that as well. This much connection with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sahih Bukhari, the Rawayat can be found there. That much connection, so Mu'ad, what was, going wrong, what was going through his mind? Undoubtedly tears were being shed, he was sobbing, crying of the thought of separation with Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We find Subhanallah, many people come from abroad <coughs> as students to educate themselves, business and so on and so forth, relocation. And that last mulaqat Subhanallah with the wife and children, how much it touches us, we may not break down in front of them because we have to maintain that manhood status. But undoubtedly when we are going in the car, we're feeling in our heart, Subhanallah, I'm not going to see these guys again for a long time in the future. He's just been told by the Rasul of Allah, you're never going to see me again. Forget next. Uh, next time, he was crying, and Rasul Sallallahu had to also control himself as well. And he mentions, Medina. He then controlled him, so he turned away, made his face towards Medina, and said, Mu'ad, listen to me, some. Listen, I'll tell you something. The people in Medina, my family, the Ahlul Bayt in Medina, innahum yirawna, innahum yirawna they think that they are the most close to me. Undoubtedly, when it comes to blood relations, they are. Well, like in the Mu'adh, this is not the condition. It's not like this at all. Listen to the words of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Mu'adh, inna awla nasalwi al-muttaquna. Man kanu haythu kanu. Mu'adh, let me tell you this. Do you know who are the people who are most close to me? Who are the ones that have that proximity with me? Who are those who have that position near me? Are those individuals who can be referred to as the muttaqun, who can be referred to as the muttaqin, who can be referred to as the pious? Man kanu, haythu kanu. Whoever they are, wherever they may be. You can be black, you can be white. You can be Arab, non-Arab. You can be rich, you can be poor. Educated, non-educated. Inna Allah la yanzur ila suwarikum. Allah doesn't care what your faces look like. Allah doesn't care about your nationalities. Allah doesn't care if you've got a red passport in your back pocket. Allah doesn't care if you have whichever country you come from, whatever language you speak from. And Inna Allah la yanzur ila suwarikum, wa la ila amwalikum. And Allah Taala does not look at the wealth which you possess. We do. We give position according to money. So someone, if not, Allah forbid, I'm not talking about anyone in particular, will entertain a position within a community and they will demand certain status. Why? Because I've got more money than other people. In terms of money and affluence, I'm bigger. So I should be given more. I should be given more status. People should salute me. People should show me that respect. Allah doesn't care. People like Qarun, Qarun, who had the wealth of the world, they inherited the wealth of the world. They would be sinking until Qiyamah. What care does Allah have for money? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at this whole dunya, is not, listen to this carefully, not equal, not equal to even the wing of a mosquito. What care does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have for these riches that you may possess? One house, two house, five houses, ten houses. Allah, Allah doesn't look at this. Whoever you are, and wherever you may be, if you have taqwa, you have God-fearing, you have piety, you fulfill the commands of Allah, you abstain from that which is haram. This in essence is taqwa. You will be in, in close proximity with the Prophet ﷺ. To use this excuse, brother, I can't make amal on deen, I can't practice deen because I'm not living in Makkah. But take this out of your brain. I can't make amal, I can't practice upon deen because I'm not living in Al Jazair, I'm not living in Tunisia, I'm not living in Morocco, I'm not living in Pakistan. That's why. Why have you destroyed yourself? Why have you thrown yourself into the darkness? Why have you thrown yourself into, into the ditches? Because you have left and forsaken your deen. Don't blame the country, blame your own actions. Alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah, and I say this without any hesitation, that we in this country enjoy the right of religious practice and religious freedom. Right or wrong? 
and therefore to use his excuse is frivolous, is, is joke, is empty, baseless, fuzul. That if I was in my own country, what do you mean own country? So that means it will just automatically sort out because you are there. By fixed up to a new era, you are now in this country and so are your children. So use this as an excuse, does not work in the court of Allah, forget, let alone working in the court of someone like myself or yourself. We, if we develop the quality of taqwa, which was the maqsad and purpose of Ramadan, would find there would be a change within our lives. That is why Allah Ta'ala made us fast. Do you think Allah Ta'ala made us fast for fun? Just to see what would happen if I make them have to go without food or water? To see what would happen if I tell them they can't go and fulfill necessities from the wife, in, obviously for a restricted, restricted period of time? You can't worship, I mean, I beg your pardon. You have to worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout different parts of the day. You have to abstain from certain things, fulfill certain things, so on and so forth. What, you think Allah gets anything out of it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is qawi from before until now. Allah is aziz from before until now. Allah is akbar before until now. And until the day of qiyamah, Allah's greatness will always increase, it will never decrease. Allah doesn't get anything out of the ata'at of you and I. Rather, this was the shafqat, the rahmat, and the mehrbani and favor of Allah upon us. He knew what was best for us. He put this upon us just so we can develop ourselves. And you saw it and we all saw it. What was the mahal? What was the environment like when in the month of Ramadan? Good or bad, right or wrong, subhanahu Allah, no one will say that it was a negative, it was always a positive. How can he? This was the reality. More people coming to the masjid, more people praying the salah, more people reading the Quran, <coughs> more people taking part in durus, more people taking part in dhikrullah, more people taking part in silatul rahim, joining the family ties. Even subhanallah, giving food to the neighbors and relatives and Muslims living nearby, even they benefited as well. This is why it was mentioned, and again, Faqih Abu Layth mentions this in the riwayah. If my ummah knew what Ramadan entailed, لَوْ تَعْلَمُ أُمَّتِي مَا فِي رَمَضَانِ لَتَمَنَّتْ أَيَّكُونَ سَنَةً if only my ummah knew what this month entailed, it wasn't just about abstaining from food and drink. Rather, it was such that we built up a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they knew the barakah which it had, the, the benefit which it had, they would all have made dua, Oh Allah, don't make Ramadan one month, make it 12 months of the year. Our, we're driven by materialism. We're driven by money. So we see money increase, we say, ha, this is good. But when we see our amal increasing, we say, Ramazan, but don't take this out of your mind. You see, our religion is not about, <coughs> not about uh, like uh, traditions or, or, or dates. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentions, Subhanallah, ahabbul a'amal ilallahi adwa muha wa inqal. Even if you increased your a'mal only by a fraction, maintain those a'mal, even if it be small. Because Allah Taala loves, loves those a'mal which are done regularly, which are done persistently, even though they may be small. Even though they may be small. So for you to wake up and read five minutes Qur'an, five pages Qur'an, two pages of Qur'an, one page of the Qur'an is better than that person that doesn't read nothing at all. And this we have to take out, I haven't got time, just one, one two minutes and wrap up. <coughs> this thought we have to take out of our mind. I was just speaking on the phone to a brother today, Allahu Akbar. And he said to me, unfortunately before I have to recall that there are many times I didn't fast in the month of Ramadan. Why? Because my family said to me, if you don't pray Taravi, then there's no point even keeping Rose. That's what, our, that's what we were, people were said to him. What is the point of even keeping fast in Ramadan when you're not even going to perform the taraweeh? Whereas the hadith of Rasul Salah mentions, فَرَضَ اللَّهُ صِيَامَهُ وَجَعَلَ اللَّهُ صِيَامَهُ فَرِيدًا وَجَعَلَ قِيَامَ لَيْلِهِ تَطَوُّعًا Wallahi, you read the hadith of Rasulullah. Allah Ta'ala made the fasting fard, and at night it was an optional prayer. Of course, it was a sunnah the mu'akkadah, you should do it um, the, or by the ijma' of sahaba, and the, we understand this. But does that mean it has an impact on the fasting? Don't listen to... And also another ajeeb, subhanAllah. Like we say, and I will mention this as well, we also say, oh, if you're not going to pray four sunta, four faras, two sunta, two nafal, three with the two nafal, tasbih fatimi, dua afterwards, and also, and then jinamaz no koi fadani. There's no point even praying. 
Another thing, oh, if you don't give some of your money to the masjid, then all your money is haram. Oh, by, why are you making deen so narrow for? Why are you making deen so tough for? Would it not be better that that individual prayed at least four faras at least, rather than coming under the ghadab of Allah? Undoubtedly, don't take this out of context. I'm not saying sunnah is not important. It is important. And the nawafil are important. And the, and the fadain and virtues are so many I could not inc- count or inc- uh, uh, mention just now. But to subhanallah, we're going to miss out on our faraiz, on our things which are compulsory. And then we're going to say to people, Neji, koi faidani, koi faidani, baiji, koi faidani. But there's no benefit at all. But who are you to dictate that in the first place? First of all, have some evidence, talk from dalil, talk from something which my Nabi said or Allah wa ta'ala said, then bring your own things afterwards. So this is why Ramadan is such, we left off, there was supposed to be an increase in our a'mal. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Aisha radiallahu anha mentions in the hadith in Muslim, if he, because of, of, of pain or anything else, missed what he had to pray at night, he would make it up during the day. We do the same thing as well. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates a hadith similar as well. If something afflicts somebody and he goes to sleep, before completing his ma'mulat, his practices, his a'mal, his salah, and then reads those after fajr salah, but before dhuhr, insha'Allah he will get the same reward as that if you prayed at night. The same reward, Rawahu Muslim. So we need to keep practice on our a'mal. What we did in Ramadan, maintain. Okay, the timings can change slightly, but maintain some a'mal. That was the purpose of Ramadan. Was Ramadan just about samosas and kebabs? Allahu Akbar, was Ramadan just about faluda and ice creams? Was Ramadan just about trifles and, 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 and pakore? It was about maintaining a connection with Allah. Ya Allah, 11 months have been ghafil, one month for you. And this month will keep me going until the next month. A boost, a vitamin push, an immune booster, whatever you want to call it. That's what it was until the next Ramadan. We did not realize what Ramadan was about. We thought it was just keeping hungry. Why do you fast? Well, uh, to, to feel like what the poor feel like. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. By understand what fasting is about. Even when a non-Muslim asks us, why are you fasting? Uh, well, well, it gives us a feeling of what the poor go through. What a fl- Give an answer properly, subhanAllah. Why do you fast so I can recognize who my Allah is? Give a comprehensive answer. We need to learn this as well, but as time doesn't permit, we're not going to go into this now. We finish off on this point, inshallah, that just as how we were in Ramadan, may Allah make it that we carry on our, our, our amal until next Ramadan. Say Ameen, inshallah. Only you can do it. You have the potential, not me. وَمَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَاغ We can only give a message, we can only bring something forth. But we see the trend. We see the trend. Where subhanAllah, even Rasul Sallallahu mentioned to Abdullah, uh, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, Abdullah ibn Amr, he mentioned to him, Ya Abdullah, la takun mithla fulan, don't become like XYZ individual. Kana yaqumu min al layl, fataraka qiyam al layl. He used to be very particular on qiyam al layl. Kana yaqumu dawam. He always used to do it. And then what happened? Taraka qiyam al layl. He just left it and abandoned it. We get an understanding from this verse, subhanallah, and other, I mean, this, ahad, this hadith, I beg your pardon. If you maintain one amal, practice, develop, increase, regardless of how small it is. in qalla, don't say ji small. At least you're doing it. You was doing something which you was not doing before. So whatever it is, fix a tartib, fix a schedule, fix a time, and stick to it. Insha'Allah, you will benefit now in Sha'aban, in all months. Insha'Allah, up until the time of next Ramadan as well. So may Allah wa Taala give us the true ability to practice and whatever has been mentioned. We are going through now uh, the month of Shawwal, so that is why Subhanallah, take advantage of whatever has been left. Six fast if you can do. Masha'Allah, maintain some amal. Don't go from this gathering thinking, "Ji, Jumman." I've done my no subhanallah this is not just rasmi bayan that we listen and go go with a positive message and what is that inshallah I need to maintain some a'mal what I did in Ramadan we can all slack we can all become a bit weak but Allah ta'ala will give us the tawfiq if we say inshallah and we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah ta'ala accept you and I for the best of a'mal inshallah and may he forgive our shortcomings and also make us the means and the ability to take this unto others as well wa akhiru da'wana and الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله تعالى على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين